Well, good day, everyone. So, what I wanted to share to you is about, the, of course, the living in the IT era in computer fundamentals, about hardware devices. As you learn in another lesson, a computer is a collection of electrical and mechanical parts referred to as hardware. Because hardware are the pieces you can see in touch, and hardware performs the physical work of the computer. The software programs, including operating system, application programs, and device drivers, control the hardware and make it useful and within the device itself, firmware provides basic functionality. Now, this will be the lesson objective. In this lesson, you will look at different types of computers, learn about various types of computer hardware, and examine ways to connect devices. On completion, you should, be, you should be familiar with the relationship among hardware device drivers, firmware, and platforms, common measurements used in computing, standard internal computer components, memory and storage, identifying different types of computer, computers, keyboards, microphones, and touchscreens, typical smartphone hardware, Windows power plants, connecting peripheral devices, and wireless connection technologies. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, computer is collection of an electrical and mechanical part and referred to us uh, as hardware. Hardware are the type or the, the pieces you can see and touch, and hardware performs the physical work of the computer. While the software programs, okay, including operating system, as I mentioned earlier, application programs and device driver can control the hardware and make it useful. And within the device itself, firmware provides basic functionality. An operating system uses small programs called device drivers to communicate with installed hardware devices. And device drivers are software that allows you your computer to communicate with and control the devices connected to it. <coughs> device drivers actually control the hardware and the operating system communicates with the device drivers. Without drivers, devices would not function properly. <coughs> device drivers are developed and released by hardware manufacturers. For any given piece of hardware, device drivers are developed for use on the specific operating system and usually a specific version of the operating system. Many devices include drivers for numerous operating systems. For example, if you purchase a printer, the printer most likely will ship with drivers for Windows and Mac OS X. Some device, uh, devices include drivers that will work on only one operating system. For example, a particular wireless network adapter may work on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1, but not support Mac OS X or Linux. Don't forget that you need to always read the product labeling before purchasing hardware to make sure that it is compatible with your operating system. Because operating systems generally include drivers for various devices that you may want to connect. And these generic drivers will provide basic functionality, but in order to utilize the full features of a device, you should install the driver that ship with the device or download and install drivers from the manufacturer's website. As you update your programs in your operating system over the course of time, you should check periodically for driver updates. The firmware is built in programmable logic or software that is embedded in a piece of hardware and controls how the device functions. Because firmware is a, de a device specific, it is developed for one particular model and release of a device. The firmware on the smartphone, for example, is the code needed to control the phone hardware itself and run the base operating system. Firmware, however, is separate from the operating system. For example, 
you may be running the Android version 5.1.1 or the Lollipop version mobile operating systems on your phone and be running firmware built number G920VVRU480K7 A smartphone manufacturers decide which phones will receive an update and send the update to the various mobile network providers. For example, the T-Mobile, Verizon, Vodafone, and so on, who sell their phones. The mobile provider can then add network-specific elements, such as branding or provider-specific features, and test the updates to ensure the best use experience. At the proper time, as determined by the mobile provider, the firmware update is pushed out to the devices that are part of their cellular network. Different mobile providers push out firmware updates at different times. For example, if you and your uh, your parents both own a Samsung Galaxy S5 and you are on the Verizon network and he or she is on the T-Mobile network, she or he might receive a firmware update in October but you might not receive it until March. The software application in mobile apps run on a hardware device within an environment created by the operating system. Actually, uh, the environment referred is a platform. No? Uh, the platform is an interface between the application and the operating system and is what makes it possible for apps to run on a device. Think of a platform as a foundation and the operating system and device drivers and firmers work together to control the basic functionality of the hardware. An application sits on top of this app foundation, which is already in control of the hardware. The application performs its own special functions and then sends specific requests to the operating system to make sure that the necessary hardware tasks are performed. The functionality and syntax of this request is built into the platform. About the numbers, before we examine different types of hardware and how various devices compared to one another, you must understand how speed and storage capacity are measured. All the instruments revolve around the binary digit or bit. A bit is the smallest unit of data a computer can understand. A bit can have one of two values, A or zero or a one. Bits are grouped in sequences of zeros and ones to represent data. A group of eight bits is called a byte, and the smallest unit of data humans can understand is represented by one alphanumeric characters from A to Z or zero to nine. An alphanumeric characters requires a full byte of space in either the computer memory or a storage device. We have here the measuring capacity. The storage capacity, that is the amount of space available to store the data either in disk or in memory, is measured in bytes because a byte represents such a small amount of data and these capacities are measured in thousands, millions, billions and trillions of bytes. Notice that a byte is indicated by a capital B in the abbreviation. The following table shows standard capacity measurement. So as you can see here, we have bit, no? we have a single binary digit, byte, 8 bits, kilobyte or KB, 1024 bytes. For megabyte, we have MB, that 1024 kilobytes. Gigabytes, GB, 1,024 megabytes. For terabyte, we have TB, 1,024 gigabytes. And petabyte, PT, with uh, 1,000 gigabytes or quadrillion bytes. <coughs> we have also measuring frequency. 
Uh, inside every computer is at least one microprocessor. The microprocessor is a silicon chip that performs calculations and logical operations in the computer. The microprocessor is also referred to us as a central processing unit or CPU or simply as the processor. The CPU controls everything that happens in the computer. All the hardware, all the memory, and all the software send information to, to and receive commands from the central processing unit. Different CPUs process information and instructions at different speed and processor speed is measured in units called Hertz. Silicon chips oscill oscillate or cycle when electrical current passes through them. 1 Hertz is equal to 1 cycle or oscillation per second. Because processor chips are very fast, this measurement is commonly used with the prefixes shown in the following or show in our table. For Hertz, the abbreviation is HA, 1 cycle per second. For kilohertz, 1,000 cycle per second. For megahertz, 1 million cycle per second. For gigahertz, 1 billion cycle per second. And for terahertz, 1 trillion per second. Faster processors give better performance than slower ones. So, the higher the hertz, the more powerful the processor. Most desktop systems available today include processors with speed speeds between 3 and 4 gigahertz. And most laptops include processor in the 2 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz range. When you purchase a computer, you will find the processor speed listed in the product description. How about the measuring of bandwidth? Network connection, so for example, those in a cellular mobile or in the IP network such as the internet, move data from one location to another at a particular, particular volume per unit of time. The measurement of this volume is called bandwidth and it is expressed in bits per second. Synonyms for bandwidth include capacity, bit, rate, transfer speed, data transfer rate, and throughput. As with the storage capacity, bandwidth is usually expressed in terms of thousands, millions, and even mil billions of bits per second, as what we have here or showing in our table. The BPS is the bit, uh, bits per second, KBPS is thousand bits per second, MBPS is the million bits per second, and GBPS is a billion bits per second. The greater the bandwidth, the greater the capacity for transferring data, and the greater the network performance. Now, the basics, what's inside? Regardless of whether, uh, regardless of whether your computer is a large desktop tower or a ultra portable tablet, the basic anatomy is the same. Every computer includes at least a system board, and this is a printed circuit board that contains most of the computer circuitry and provides pathways for communication among all the components in connected devices. Internal components are seated on an or otherwise attached to the system board. It also provides ports for connecting external devices such as mouse speakers, chargers, and so on. One or more processors, the silicon chips that control the hardware components and manage the flow of data and instruction. And of course, Gigabyte Aorus Intel Z370 Gaming 5 motherboard. This will be an example of a motherboard for Aorus Intel Z370 Gaming number 5. The processor, again, is the silicon chip that controls the hardware components and manages the flow of data and instruction. So uh, we have an example here of the red player and the blue player of a processor. While the input devices, this allows you to send information to the computers. Example includes a keyboard or a touch screen. So we have here a camera, 
scanner, joystick, webcam, keyboard, mouse, trackball, microphone, and so on. While the output devices, this allow the computer to send information to you. So example include a monitor or a display screen. We have also storage devices. And these include memory chips and other storage media. So as what we have here, we have flash drive, we have CD-ROM, and uh, previously we have disk, no, scan disk, uh, and others. And a power supply. A power supply converts AC current from a wall outlet into low voltage or DC power for the components. In uh, Actually, in a portable uh, devices, the DC power is stored in a rechargeable battery. And later on, we will examine some of these internal components. In order to run programs and create and use files, a computer needs both memory and storage space. And every file used by a computer has a specific byte size. And there must be sufficient memory to hold the file when it is used and sufficient storage space to store the file when it is not in use. For example, for a random uh, or for a computer to process information, it must include a certain amount of stored uh, system memory. And this type of memory is also called random access memory or RAM. RAM is used for the temporary storage of information, and data and programs are read into memory from a storage location and then passed from memory to the CPU. Take note, without RAM, a computer could not run programs or be used to create or edit files. We need to take note that RAM can store data only while the computer is on. Any information stored in RAM vanishes when the computer is turned off. When you close a program or save and close the file, the information is cleared from memory and the memory becomes available to store other information. Physically, memory consists of chips located inside the system unit and the number of memory chips in the computer and the capacity of each chip determine the amount of available memory. How much RAM do you need? Maybe you're asking, sir, why do we need RAM and how much RAM do we need? All software, including operating system, requires RAM and lists the minimum amount required to run the program successfully. Some programs require significant amount. For example, Adobe Photoshop requires a minimum of 2 gig, although 8 gig is recommended. AutoCAD 2016 requires a minimum of 4 gig, 8 gig is recommended. Determining how much RAM you will need depends on which program you need to run or want to run. The general rule of thumb is the more RAM, the better. Every time you launch a program or open file, you use RAM. The more files or program you have running, the more RAM you are using. Having sufficient or better still more than sufficient, Memory keeps the system performing at top speed and gives you ability to run several application programs simultaneously and or to have multiple browser windows open without experiencing a slowdown in your performance. A storage. <clears throat> a computer loads software programs into RAM while you are working, however, the software program must be stored on the computer when they are not in use. Additionally, any files that you create using a software program must also be stored if you want to be able to retrieve them in the future. To locate in remote storage location, Programs and user files are saved to storage devices, and these devices can be internal or external. 
all internal storage devices and external devices attached directly to your computer are considered local storage location. You can also save your files to remote storage location, folders on other computers, in your network or folders in a cloud storage server or example of remote location. So, how much storage do you need? All software, including operating systems, requires storage space and this the minimum amount required to install the program. Some programs are quite large. Windows 10, for example, can require up to 20 gig of storage space. Determining how much space you need depends on which programs you want to install and, perhaps more importantly, on the anticipated size and number of the user files you plan to store. Different types of files require different amounts of storage space. For example, word processing documents, even long ones, are relatively small files. However, they increase in size if you add media such as images or audio files or video files. Image files can be large depending on the file format. Audio files can be quite large and video files can be tremendous. For example, a 60-second video saved in Blu-ray format might be 420 MB, while a 60-minute video could the 25 GB. If you plan to store in edit videos or high-resolution photographs on your system, you should be sure to purchase a system with sufficient storage or you can quickly use up your internal storage space. The more storage space you have, the less stringent you have to be regarding which files to save. The common storage devices include the hard disk, external drives, flash drives, and memory cards. The term hard disk and hard drive are used to refer to a central storage location inside a computer. Hard disks are the primary storage location for both data and programs. Software program must be installed on a hard disk before you can use them. The operating system must also be installed on a hardware or hard disk. Some computers use magnetic hard disk drive or HDDs, which include moving parts. A magnetic hard drive stores data on platters, which are metal or plastic disks that are coated with magnetic material. A motor spins the platter around a spindle while read the right heads. Hover close to the surface of the platter and read or write data on the magnetic coating. Some computers use solid state drives or SSDs which do not have any moving parts. A solid state drive stores data on a set of interconnected flash memory chips that save the data even when the power is off. Flash memory chips can be installed directly on the system board installed on a card that plugs into the system board or house inside a 2.5 inch box that fits into the slot where you would otherwise install a magnetic hard drive. A hard disk is a solid state drive which do not have any moving parts as I mentioned. A solid state drive stores that on a set of interconnected flash memory chips that save the data even when the power is on. And this will be our previous hard disk drive. The external drives are hard drives contained a case in a case and attached to the computer with a cord as a peripheral device. External drives provide extra storage capacity for user documents, pictures, videos and others you do not you do not however install software or external drives <coughs> flash memory storage in tablets and phones because flash memory chips or the technology used in solid state drives can be installed directly on the system board and this type of storage is used the tablets and smartphones 
most portable uh, devices include onboard storage memory. We have what we call flash drive. The flash drive, also called jump drives or thumb drives, are portable mass storage devices that use flash memory chips. Flash drives are small, averaging between 2.5 inches or 60, 60 millimeter and 2 and 3 part inches or 70 millimeters, long and around 1.5 inch 16 millimeters to 3 part, uh, 3 part inch or 20 millimeter wide, weight less than 1 ounce or 28 grams, and can store gigabytes of information. They are durable and reliable because they do not contain moving parts and can last for several years. Well, the technology is basically the same. The flash memory chips used in a USB thumb drive are slower and less re reliable than those used in solid state drives. That is the reason solid state drives cost more than thumb drives of the same capacity. We have what we call security digital cards. SD cards or SD cards. SD cards are small, high capacity flash memory storage devices. You use an SD card in the same way you would use a flash drive. Insert it into the designated slot on your device. A card reader or writer is integrated into the device that uses the SD card. You can write or store data on the card and then retrieve or read it. You can also pop the card out of one device and insert it into a reader on another device for the purpose of transferring files from one device to another. SD cards are popular storage devices for digital cameras, camcorders, cell phones, tablets, MP4 players or MP3 players, and GPS systems. Optical disk and drives. Optical disk drives are designed to read compact disk or CDs. The digital versatile video disk or DVDs, the drive spins the disk and a laser reads the data stored on the disk. A CD-ROM or compact disk read-only memory or DVD-ROM drive is similar to a player in an audio-video entertainment system. The information is written or burned onto the surface and retrieved with a laser beam and you can only read the data. The optical writer or the optical writer drive, also known as barn drive, use a special software which allows you to burn or write data onto a disk. The new desktop systems are usually equipped with at least one optical drive, usually a DVD optical drive or a CD DVD optical writer drive. Laptops used to include an optical drive but more and more often, newer models do not. You can, however, use an external optical drive that connects to the laptop through the USB cable. Identifying types of computers. Computers are integrated into our daily lives and are available in a wide variety of forms and types. What comes to mind when you think the word computer? A room size? A supercomputer performing millions of complex calculation or space exploration in satellite launches? A bank of mainframes supporting hundreds of thousands of simultaneously monitor monetary transactions? Or do you think of the CPU tower sitting on your desk or perhaps a laptop instead? What about a tablet or a smartphone? What about embedded system chips in controlling functions in robotized assembly lines or our airliner fuel systems or in medical imaging equipment? All of these are examples of computers. In our discussion, we will focus your attention on the computers readily found in offices, schools, and homes, and they are the familiar devices you see and touch every day. Some types of computers are better suited to certain tasks than are others. 
But as technology advances and the market responds to the way people use devices, the lines that distinguish one device from another become less clearly. To provide a baseline for a companion, com comparison, imagine that you are writing a novel destined for the bestseller list. As you read about each device, consider how convenient and or comfortable you might be using that particular device to work on your story. Servers. In contrast to other types of computers, desktop, laptops, tablets, and smartphones, which are used for personal computing, servers are used to support other computers for business purposes. A server is a computer that provides files on or services to other system on a network. So for example, a server may provide email services or host a website or store databases or documents for everyone in a school or business or provide telecommunications or transaction services. A server runs an operating system designed specifically for use on a server. Example of common server operating system includes Windows Server 2012, Mac OS X, Server, or Linux Server. Server also runs a special software for, for providing services. A web server may run Apache Web Server or IIS or Internet Information Server for hosting and serving web pages. A database server may run Microsoft SQL Server, an email server may run Microsoft Exchange Server, and so on. These programs are very different from the end-user productivity software you may be used to using because servers are not used for personal computing. System marketed for use as servers are built differently than standard PCs. They are designed to be highly reliable and must have a low failure rate. Processor power, memory, and hard drive size are the main selling points. Servers must be able to run continually or continually and are shut down or restarted only when software or hardware upgrades that are being installed. For this reason, they often include redundant power supplies. Because of their increased power, server systems are considerably more expensive than desktop systems. We have the common configuration. Actually, servers come into three basic designs or forms factors. We have what we call tower server. It looked like desktop pieces and these were the original model and they required individual monitors, keyboards, network, cards, and cabling, usually found in small businesses where perhaps only one or two servers are required. We have what we call rack servers. Rack servers designed to be installed into a framework called a rack, which contains multiple slots in the, into which servers can be inserted. The server is secured into the rack system using mounting screws. The rack system enables you to stack multiple servers vertically. These are open accessed via a network connection from a central common station that include a monitor and keyboard. When required, however, you can also connect a monitor and keyboard to a server in a rack. Rack servers are usually found in a data center housing 3 to 24 servers. And the preceding image shows rack servers in a data center. So we have an example of a rack server here. Another one is the blade servers. A blade servers are stripped down servers designed to minimize power consumption and to take up very little physical space. This type of server must be inserted into a blade enclosure which can hold multiple blade servers and which provides electrical power, cooling and networking connections. Blade servers are accessed by a network connections from a central control station and are generally found in data centers housing more than 24 servers. G 
generally used by. The people who perform work on server systems are generally IT staff, web designers, or upload finished web pages, scripts, and other elements to a web server. Or this database administrator who maintain large devices or databases or customer and product information on dedicated data server. Since servers are not used for personal computing, you would not use one to work on your best seller. Now, what is desktop computers? A desktop computers are designed to set on or beneath a desk. They are fairly large, although many are available in compact configurations so that they require less space. Desktop computers come in two, two basic design. We have Macs, produced by Apple, and this machine features a slick design in which the monitor and processing units are housed within the same case. Only Apple produces the Mac. Macs are designed to run the Mac OS X operating system. And this is an example of a Mac. <coughs> the PC. The PC produced originally by IBM and later produced by several manufacturers. Traditionally, in a desktop PC, the processing unit is housed within a case and an external monitor, keyboard, and mouse are attached with cables. The fully assembled combination is sometimes referred to as a workstation. In today, there are also some all-in-one units available. You can use a, bar a wide variety of operating system on a PC, but by far the most one commonly used installed on a PC is the Windows operating system. Both Macs and PCs are available in a wide variety of types and configuration, including desktop, models, laptops, servers, and touchscreen devices. The desktop computers are stable and powerful and must include ample storage space. It's around 500 GB to 1 TB on average, a fair amount on installed memory of 4 GB to 8 GB on average. The ability to read data stored on a wide variety of storage media and the ability to play music and video. They include several USB ports for connecting external devices and may include one or more slots for reading and writing to SD cards. Many are equipped with powerful video and sound cards. They usually include a network port for a wired network connection and may include built-in wireless network ability as well. They are also easily up upgradable. Okay? You can pop open the case to access the internal components and there is generally enough working room to easily replace or upgrade components such as video, audio, or network card. And you can also easily add more storage space. The common setup of a typical desktop includes the PC on or under the desk and the keyboard and mouse either on the desk or on a pull-out tray 4 to 5 inches below the desktop. The keyboard and mouse may be wired or wireless, and most people use large flat screen commute, computer monitors or TVs that can accept PC's input, and this large display allow you to easily work with large spreadsheets, <coughs> drafting programs, or graphic editing programs. Users often attach speakers for playing sound, and some even opt for a surround sound set up with high quality speakers and separate subwoofer for extra bass. Depending on your sound card and the available space, you have quite a bit of freedom in setting up your system. A desktop system can be a comfortable place for long work, long work periods and is usually the most accommodating for working extensively with documents. Uh, when you are working on that novel, a desktop might be just the place for you. The primary disadvantage of a desktop system is that it is not portable because it must always be plugged in into the electrical outlet while you are using it. 
you can you can of course move them from one location to another however this requires time to tear down the workstation at one location and set it up again plug in the monitor mouse and keyboard at the new location now Generally used by traditional people who work at one dedicated desk for the duration of workday, for example, office workers, secretaries, and accountants, have used desktop system. However, as portable computers have become more powerful and less expensive, many workers now use laptop systems as their primary computing device. More and more often in the office or in the workplace, only those who require significant memory processing power, video resolution, and storage space use desktop systems, while the rest of the employees use laptops for their day-to-day -day work. So, for example, people who use design software such as AutoCAD or Autodesk Revit or photo and video editing software such as Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere are most likely to use desktop system. Laptop or notebook computers are designed to be portable. They are small and light enough to set on your lap. They are also self-contained in everything you need, like display, keyboard, camera, speakers, pointing device is included in one unit. Laptop runs the same operating system as their desktop counterparts and include the same internal components, such as a hard drive and installed memory. Laptops also include a rechargeable, rechargeable battery that is charged from the AC adapter. <coughs> Laptops are very popular with students and business people alike because of their portability. For example, a student can bring a laptop to a class and take notes, then take it home to do homework and other assignments. Aside from their portability, laptops are popular because they are available in PC and Mac models. They are powerful enough to run most productivity and entertainment software. That is, they can run office and play movies and stream audio, just as well as desktop system. And this makes them well suited for the needs and of most users. They usually include built-in wireless networking capability. In some cases, the power consumption is considered a greener alternative to desktop. You can purchase a number of accessories to enhance your laptop computing experience and make it more like a desktop computing experience. So for example, you can connect to a large, mo larger monitor, add an external full-size keyboard with a number pad, or connect a mouse if you don't like using the built-in touchpad. The disadvantages actually of laptop is they generally are not as robust as desktop system. They come with less storage space, less memory, and lower power graphic cards. And this uh, can make them poorly suited for running specialized software like graphics manipulation and video editing programs that require extra computing or graphics power. Laptops generally have a shorter lifespan than their desktop counterparts. Laptops include many of the same internal components as desktop system, but these are typically integrated into the system board. If an integrated component such as video or audio card fails, it cannot be replaced. You should need or you would need to replace the entire system board, and it is easier and often less expensive to purchase a new laptop. Because of the extremely tight working space, it is also a complicated process to replace a failed component that is non-integrated. Repairs or component upgrade must usually be handled by a professional. For many laptops, for many laptops are not a comfortable to use as desktop system. The keyboards are smaller and more compact, and many do not include a numeric keypad. On some models, the touchpad is very sensitive, and users may find that the cursor jumps around on the screen while they are typing because their wrist make contact with the touchpad and many users prefer using mouse over using a laptop touchpad.
The common configuration of laptop, of course, while some people actually use a laptop on their laps, sometimes while seated by the pool, many work seated at a desk and use a laptop in place of a desktop system. And typically, to make the laptop more comfortable to use and to make it seem more like a desktop system, users often attach a separate full-size keyboard and a mouse. Laptop range in a size from 17 inches to a small of 11 inches, and for some users, the screen is too small for comfortable viewing. So for this reason, many users attach an external monitor to their laptop systems. They can choose to duplicate the display from the laptop screens onto the external monitor, or they can choose to extend the display, thereby using external monitor for extra screen space. So for example, you can view a Word document on the laptop screen and view an Excel workbook on the external monitor at the same time. Users who cannot uh, who connect to external monitors, keyboards, and mouse devices at work and then disconnect and take the laptop home at night, open invest in docking station. A docking station is a device that provides a simplified way of plugging in to peripheral devices. You attach the monitor, mouse, keyboard, speaker, and so on to the ports on the docking station where the cables can remain plugged in. You can dock or connect the laptop on the docking station. Because the station is already connected to the peripheral devices, the laptop has instant access to all the attached devices without the need for tumbling with cables. At the end of the day, you're simply undock or disconnect the laptop from the docking station and can be on your way. It is also quite common to connect an external monitor or projector to a laptop for the purpose of delivering a presentation to an audience. The user can run and control the slideshow from the laptop and view speaking notes at the like on the laptop screen while projecting only the presentation to the large screen that faces the audience. Regardless of which configuration you use, a laptop might also be a good choice for working on that the novel. They usually run the same software programs as their desktop counterparts, provide ample storage space, and include good integrated tools for working in the long documents and typing text, and their portability also allows you to select an inspiring location in which to work. The Chromebook A Chromebook is a specialized laptop design primarily to run cloud-based applications instead of programs that are installed on the hard drive. Instead of running the Windows or Mac OS X operating system, these portables run the Chrome OS operating system, which is easy on the system resources and streamlined for accessing the internet. They can be set up in minutes and will boot up in 2 or 3 seconds and much faster than Windows or Mac operating system. The devices themselves are lightweight, durable, and draw less power than their standard counterparts. A Chromebook battery generally provides 7 to 9 hours of continuous use before needing to be to recharge. A Chromebook also provides a full screen, 11.6 inches up to 15 inches, built-in keyboard, and fairly powerful processor. Although, designed for running cloud-based application, they include provision for working offline too. Chromebooks are considerably less expensive than standard laptops and are being deployed widely for use in high school, middle school, elementary, college, and even graduate school or even elementary school classroom. Their use is not limited to classroom. However, anyone who can accomplish what they need to do using web-based, cloud-based application can benefit from using a Chromebook. A tablet. A tablet is a portable computer, is small enough to hold in your hands. The computer circuit circuitry, a battery, and a flat touchscreen display are all rolled into a single handheld device. Tablets come with a microphone, speakers, and sensors that let the tablet sense which direction is up. All tablets have touchscreen capability. 
enabling you to use your finger or a specialized pen called a stylus to touch an item on the screen to select it. You move your finger or stylus around the screen as you would a, as you would a mouse and you can type input using an on-screen virtual keyboard instead of using a physical keyboard. Open. Tablets include physical buttons for powering on and adjusting the volume and may include a USB port for charging the tablet and for transfer or data transfer. Will include at least one camera. Actually, many provide a front-facing and a rear-facing camera and provide an option for connecting devices such as headphones or external speakers. Instead of hard drive, tablets are used onboard flash memory for data storage and usually include a slot for removable storage devices such as SD cards. The two types of operating system are used in tablets. We have desktop base and mobile base. The tablets uh, that runs on the desktop base operating system are thicker and heavier than the other type. They require more cooling and they have a shorter battery life. However, they are also have more connection ports and can run applications such as Microsoft Office Suite in addition to mobile apps. They also features the familiar desktop operating system interface. Tablets that run mobile-based operating system are lighter, run cooler, and offer much longer battery life. However, these tablets run only mobile apps. Mobile-based operating systems are also uh, used on smartphones. Instead of desktop interface, mobile-based operating system feature a home screen from which users tap an icon for, a, for the app and they, they want to run. Tablets are light, ultra portable, and well suited for entertainment and online activities. Most features high resolution, high definition, screen in past wireless network capabilities. Many come Bluetooth enabled so that you can use external speakers without connecting them through a standard audio port. Popular models include the Apple iPad, Samsung Galaxy, or Windows Surface. As, as what I discussed earlier, okay? So, the two types of operating system, we have tablets that run a desktop mobile operating system and tablets that run a mobile-based operating system are larger. The two-in-ones. Tablets have become so popular that many laptops now offer tablet-style features. And these two-in-one convertible devices are laptops with a special touch screen display that you can fold all the way back to 360 degrees so that you can use the laptops like a tablet. Such devices offer the power, comfort, and document editing capability of a laptop with the high definition, high speed streaming, touchscreen capabilities of a tablet. We have smartphones. Smartphones are handheld devices that combine the features of a standard cell phone with those of a personal computer. They are widely used by people of all ages for a wide variety of purposes. You can use them to make calls, send text messages, download music or electronic books from the web. Take pictures or video, check your email, browse the internet, access cloud storage, open and edit documents, use GPS navigation, make mobile payments and watch movies, all in the palm of your hand. While you, while you can open email attachment and read documents on a smartphone, you would probably not want to spend a lot of time doing so. Even though, you can install the Microsoft Word app on a smartphone and use it to edit your document. It would probably become a tiring experience after a relatively short time. Additionally, internal storage space on a smartphone is limited. Unlike traditional cell phones, smartphones allows users to install 
configure and run a tremendous variety of application programs called apps. They run mobile app operating system and are, are highly customizable. The smartphones come complete with built-in cameras, video cameras, system memory and support for memory cards for storage, uh, storing a data, and include software for organizing appointments and contact lists or for writing notes. Most models incorporate touchscreen technology as well as the option to connect to a desktop or laptop computers and synchronize files such as photos, music files, or contact lists. And later on, we will will be able to discuss the smartphone hardware. Now, how we will be able to interact with our computer? Users interact with the computer through input and output devices. An input device allows you to send information to the computer. Output, output devices display information from the computer to you. Keyboards and pointing devices are basic input devices. Monitors, printers, and speakers are basic output devices. Touchscreen serves as a both input and output devices because you can touch the screen to input information and the screen display the output. We just to discuss, I just want to discuss the keyboards now. The keyboard is the primary tool for sending information to your computer. You use it to enter data or to run commands in the in application. A keyboard can be physical or virtual. In computing, a virtual device is one that does not physically exist but is made to appear and act as if it is exists by software. Virtual keyboards are presented on screen in touchscreen devices. The user or types or dials by tapping the virtual keys that appear on the screen. The physical keyboards can be external devices that connect to a computer or they can be integrated into a system. They come in many sizes and configurations. Some are ergonomically designed to protect against repetitive strain injuries such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Many include buttons for enhancing your multimedia experience. So we have Scape, of course. We have a function keys, the F1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have the numeric keypads. We have control, alt, windows, and cursor movement. Now, the preceding figures uh, show as a standard Windows keyboard, which include the following type of keys. We have typewriter keys. Use this keys to type text and enter commands. We have modifier extender keys. These keys are used in combination with other keys as shortcut to commands, menus of functions. On a window with keyboard, this include the Windows key, the Alt key, and the control key. On a Mac keyboard, use include the command key, the option key, and the control key. We have also function keys. These are, the lo these are located across the top of the keyboard and are labeled F1 through F12. Each application program assign a special meaning or functions to each key, generally to provide a shortcut for commonly used commands about the cursor movement numeric or numeric keypad that this keypad is located at the right of the keyboard and can be toggled on and off by pressing the numla key in the pad when the toggle light is on the pad becomes a calculator or numeric pad when off the pad becomes an arrow or cursor movement pad not all laptops include a numeric keypad to type numbers you use the top row of top writer case the connections keyboards are connected to desktop system using an USB connection this connection can be wired or wireless although keyboard is integrated into laptops you can also connect a separate keyboard via USB 
You can also purchase Bluetooth keyboards which connect to a system using Bluetooth technology. And most laptops, tablets, and smartphones support Bluetooth. Some tablets include a special connection that allow you to use them with detachable physical keyboards designed specifically for the tablet. In some models, the keyboard is part of the tablet case that doubles as a stand so that you can set up the tablet as viewing screen to work on a document or watch a streaming media. A pointing device. A pointing device enables you to select or activate items on the screen by placing the pointer arrow on the item and performing the required action. So for example, you can click to select a file or click and drag to select text. Pointing devices come in many forms but the traditional pointing device is a mouse. A mouse moves the pointer around on the monitor, is sliding or dragging the mouse across a flat surface such as a desk or a mouse pad causes the mouse pointer on the screen to mirror the movement. The traditional mouse uses a ball that rotated to initiate this movement as you move the mouse devices on the desk. Newer mouse models use an optical light or diode technology to move the pointer on the screen. A trackball has a ball on the side where your thumb rests. You rotate the ball to move the pointer. A mouse usually has two buttons that are used to select and activate features on the screen. Items can be selected using a single mouse click or activated using a double click. You can uh, display a shortcut, shortcut menu using a right click. Additional, of course, is that we have an additional actually actions to our mouse. And the additional, uh, the additional uh, functions or actions of a mouse are left drag. Press and hold the left mouse button as you move the mouse to move or select multiple items on the screen. Right drag. Press and hold the right mouse button as you move the mouse to move or copy items or release of the mouse button. A shortcut menu appears when further options. Scroll well. Roll, and roll the wheel between the buttons to scroll through the contents on the screen. Most software applications will zoom in or out when you press the control key while rolling the scroll. And thumb button. An additional button on the side of the device where your thumb would rest. This can be set to perform a specific tasks, such as starting a program or working as an alternate control key. To use the mouse pointer to select items, grasp the mouse with your palm down and your index finger gently resting on the, re the first button. As you slide the mouse flat along the desk, the mouse pointer will move in the same direction on the screen. If you run out of space on the desk, lift the mouse and place it in a new position on the desk and continue moving. To cancel any option, or to cancel any option, click the left button anywhere on the screen away from the item being selected. Mouse devices are available in the traditional style or a wireless devices. The traditional mouse has a cord that extends from the base of the mouse to a USB port on the computer. A wireless mouse includes a separate connector that plugs into a computer and recognizes the commands from the mouse. A Bluetooth mouse does not require a separate connector. All wireless varieties require batteries, whereas a traditional mouse needs only the, to be plugged into a computer. Touchpad. A touchpad device enables you to use your finger to move the mouse pointer around on the screen. This is common on a laptop. Although these devices can be purchased separately for use with a desktop computer, a touchpad has two buttons that work in the same manner 
as the left and right hands on the mouse. To move the mouse pointer around on the screen, place your finger anywhere on the touchpad and then glide it around the touchpad in the direction you want to move the mouse pointer. To select an item, position the mouse pointer over the item and then tap the touchpad once or click the left button below the touchpad. To activate an item, position the mouse pointer over the item and then tap the touchpad twice in quick succession or double click the left button below the touchpad. To drag an item, position the mouse pointer over the item, press control, and then glide your finger on a touch to the required location. To display a shortcut menu, position the mouse pointer over the item and then click the right button below the touchpad. Stylus It is an input device that looks familiar to a pen and can be used instead of your finger to select or activate an item on a touch screen. Press the stylus lightly on the option on the screen you want to select or activate. For example, on a smartphone or a tablet, you may use the stylus or dial the digits of a phone number, start an application, or write text, depending on the system and the programs available for that device. You can also use the stylus to draw shape or diagrams. Pointing devices of this type are typically designed in a pen format but are also available in various design and can also be referred to us as a digital writer. A touchscreen is display device that allows you to interact with a computing device by touching areas on the screen. Tablets and smartphones rely on touchscreen for receiving user input. These devices present virtual keyboards and dial pads to the user and the user types by tapping the appropriate on-screen keys. Some laptops feature touchscreen display. And you can also purchase standalone monitors with touchscreen functionality. Typically, you interact with a touchscreen using your finger or a stylus. You can move your finger or the stylus around on the screen as you would a mouse and you can touch or tap an item on the screen to select it. Touch screens detect where your, your finger or stylus is touching the screen and translate your on-screen action into key presses or mouse actions. They work well enough to be popular, however, they do not provide the same fine control and precision that you can achieve using a mouse and keyboard. The limitation, entering, entering text by typing on a touchscreen is time-consuming and can become uncomfortable after working for a while. Often it is difficult to select text and it can be frustrating looking for commands on a touchscreen when you may be accustomed to using keyboards, shortcuts, and to accomplish certain tasks. Because touchscreens are typically found on a smaller devices, it may be difficult to select the specific objects or keys you want. For example, it can be difficult to type text accurately because the keyboard keys are close together or it can be difficult to select a particular tab in a browser session when you have multiple tabs open. Power plants. Every computer has a power supply that converts the AC power from an outlet into the DC power that the computer can use. The computer receives powers using a power cord that is plugged into a standard electrical outlet. All portable computing devices include an internal or additional battery that allows you to use the computer without plugging it into an electrical outlet. Working with power plant settings 
you can easily change a power plant setting. The operating systems allow you to customize how much power it is used for a specific task. That is, you can configure and apply power plants that will automatically return off the display and put a computer into sleep after a specified amount of time. A Windows power plan is a collection of a computer hardware and system uh, settings that manage how many computer uses, uses power. A power plan will automatically adjust the screen brightness, turn off the display, or put the computer to sleep after a specified amount of time. Advanced setting in a power plan may also turn off the wireless network card or hard disk after a certain period of inactivity. So, this will be an example about a customized power plan for Dell. So, as you can see here, uh, automatically balanced performance with energy consumption on capable hardware. For power savers, serves energy by reducing your computer's performance where possible. For the balance, of course, are recommended automatically balanced performance energy consumption on a capable hardware and for the high performance favors performance but may use more energy yeah <clears throat> so windows includes three customizable customizable built-in power plants again so balance provide full performance when you need it and save powers during periods of interactivity. Power Saver saves power by reducing screen brightness and system performance and you might use this plan to get the most from a single battery charge. The high performance, this plan maximizes screen brightness and may increase system performance. This plan uses a lot more energy than the other plans. We have also uh, power plants to choose what the power buttons do or what happens when you close the lid of the laptop. Click the choose what the power buttons do or choose what closing the lid does. Option from the panel at the left of the main power options. Window. Option set her determine what happens in the power of standby sleep, hibernation, or shut, shut down window. Connecting peripherals Peripheral devices are connected to a computer system by a cable or by using wireless technology. Cables are attached to the devices to one end and the free end. It is terminated in a specialized connector designed to attach to the system unit through a special socket called a port. Most computer systems include at least the following parts, we have BGA port, we have network ports, we have audio ports, and universal serial bus or USB ports. For the video ports a while ago, this allows you to connect monitors, projectors, and even televisions to the computer for the purpose of displaying output. Again, we use video ports. For network ports, this allow your computer to connect to various networks. For audio ports, deliver sound from the sound card to external speakers or headphones. These ports are sometimes called jacks. Then the universal serial bus ports. This allow you to attack a wide variety of devices like printers, scanners, cameras, flash, flash drive, keyboards, mouse devices and so on to the computer because usb ports also delivered electrical power they can be used to elect to power peripheral devices or to recharge the batteries of connected devices sometimes we use this one for uh, charging our mo mobile phone video ports and connectors video ports 
allows you to connect a monitor, projector, or television to a computer in order to display video output. Most desktop systems include at least two video ports. High-performance system and gaming systems often include more standard computer video ports include video card graphics, digital, high, uh, digital video interface, high-definition multimedia interface, as what we have here. The VGA adapter or the video graphics adapter is an analog interface between a PC and monitor that was widely used prior to DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. While the digital video interface or DVI is a video connection standard created by the Digital Display Working Group or DDWG and the High Definition Multimedia Interface or the HDMI is a propriety audio video interface for transmitting unpressed video data in compressed or uncompressed dig digital audio data from an HDMI compliant source devices, display controlled computer monitor, video projector, digital television, and digital audio. To attach a monitor, check the ports on the computer and the ports on the monitor and use an appropriate cable. That is, use a VGA cable if you will be able using VGA ports or an HDMI cable if you will be using HD HDMI. Insert its connector firmly into appropriate port on the computer and on the monitor. If your monitor's input ports do not match any of the video output ports on your computer, you can use an adapter to convert signals from one format to another. Laptops, tablets, and phones all, all incorporate display mode display it to the device itself. However, most laptops and some tablets include video out ports that allows you to send output to a second display device. Tablets often include mini display ports which require a mini version of one of the standard video connectors and you can purchase specialized video cables that include a mini connector or one end and a standard size connector on the other. You can also use a standard video cable with a standard to mini connection adapter. We need to take note that smartphones and high-end tablets include screen casting software, which enables you to wirelessly project your device screen to a suitable equipped display device. The monitors. The monitor is an output device that enables you to view information the computer display. All monitors include a power switch and the power cord, as well as brightness and contrast controls to adjust the screen image. Most include two types of video input ports. Monitors comes in a wide variety of sizes, resolutions, and types. The larger the screen, the larger the image will be on the screen and the more expensive the monitor will be. Resolution or the monitor's ability to display images is a measurement based on a particular mathematical level of sharpness and clarity and it is also a factor in the price. And some monitors include touchscreen technology. Connecting a second display device. Physically connecting a second display device to a laptop or desktop system is a simple matter of connecting the correct video cable. After the physical connection is in place, the operating system detects the second display. You can then configure the appropriate settings for how you want to use the additional display. In Windows 10, you can use the setting up or the control panel. So, in the following figure, in this figure, the display window of the setting up show two display devices are connected to the system. If you connect a second display and it does not appear in this window, click detect to force the operating system to re-examine its current connection. Once the second display appears in the window, you can proceed. The choices includes duplicate this display. This option sends the same output to monitor 1 and monitor 2. Extend this display, 
This option allows you to show different output on, an each, on each monitor. For example, you can look at your email on monitor 1 and work on a spreadsheet on monitor 2. Or you can display a large spreadsheet across both monitors. Show only one. This option shows the output only on the monitor designated as number 1. Monitor 2 goes blank. Uh, show only on uh, only on two. This option uh, show only on the monitor designed as number two. Monitor one goes blank. <coughs> network ports and connectors. A network port on a computer allows you to connect a local area networking using a network cable. The port, technically an RJ45 jack, is known by several names, including Ethernet port. Network port and LAN port. An Ethernet port, which looks like an uh, oversized telephone jack, and an Ethernet cable are shown in the figure. A network port allows you to connect to a wired network using a network cable, also called the Ethernet cable. You connect one end of the cable into the port on your computer, and the other end into a LAN port in a wall jack or into LAN port or a networking device such as network switch or network routers. Audio ports and connectors. Dedicated audio ports on a computer sound card allow you to connect audio devices such as speakers, headphones, or microphones to your computer. A typical sound card for a desktop system include 3.5 mm audio ports called jacks for various types of audio devices and game adapters. Audio jacks may be marked with an icon or are identified by color coding. So pink is that is for microphone. Light blue or light blue line in, for example, a tape player or CD player. Lime green line out speakers or headsets. So by this time, you know where uh, this color represents. Okay. Again, pink for microphone, light blue for line in for tape player or CD player, lime green is for line out or speakers or headphone. Laptops, tablets, and smart uh, smartphones include one 3.5 mm audio jack, and you can connect headphones, earbuds, or external speakers using a wire connected to the device or using a standard auxiliary or aux port. The male connector is shown here as what we have here. Uh, many audio devices such as headset, speakers, and microphones can also be attached to a computer through a USB connection or a wireless Bluetooth connection. This is a sample of a universal serial bus. A connection makes it possible to connect a wide array of peripheral devices as a computer. USB is used to mass storage such as flash drive and to connecting human interface device. Because it is also deliver power, it is used as charging standard for devices with rechargeable batteries. And this will be an example of a USB port. So the USB port actually standard has been in use for several years with version 2.0, 3.0 in widespread use today and version 3.1 breaking onto the scene. Version 2.0 can transfer data at a top speed of 480 Mbps. The usually color coding for USB 2.0 ports and connectors is black or white. For 3.0, a called super speed USB has a theoretical top speed of 5 Gbps. Version 3.1 Generation 1 is almost identical to USB 3.0 except that it supports new connectors. The usual color coding for USB ports and connectors is blue. For 3.1, Generation 2 promises speeds of the 10 Gbps. The usual color coding of 3.1 ports are connected is, is tail blue. More desktop systems sold today include several USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports. 
Laptop generally include two or three USB ports. If you want to connect several USB devices to a laptop, you can increase the number of available ports by connecting USB hub. The hub uses one USB ports on the computer and provides four to six or eight open ports for connecting devices. Connectors. Connector types. As portable devices have become smaller, the USB standard has adopted different size connectors. Type A connectors are the flat rectangular connectors are you probably most familiar with. Many and micro connectors are commonly found on devices with a slim profile. If, you, if your device ships with a USB cable, it will include the correct connector type. USB flash drive. The USB flash drive is a flash memory data storage device integrated with a connector or USB connector. The drive consists of a smaller circuit board and a standard type A USB connector tucked inside a plastic or rubberized case. The connector may include a protective cap or may retract into the case. The USB mass uh, storage standard used by flash drive is supported by modem operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. Plus drive with USB 2.0 support can store more data and transfer data faster than optical drives. And they are easier to use. When you plug the drive into USB port, the operating system automatically recognizes it and assigns it in a drive letter. It is recommended that you right-click the drive icon and then eject before moving or removing a flash drive. You should also ensure that the activity light on the flash drive itself is not blinking when you remove the drive. Removing the flash drive while the activity light is blinking may cause the data to be lost or damaged. Printers Printers converts that is on the screen into printed pages. All applications allow you to choose different print options such as landscape or portrait, orientation, paper size, and manual or automatic feed. In the not too distant past, printers connected to computers using dedicated printer ports and print cables. Today, printers are connected using USB connections or network connections. To connect a printer directly to, use, uh, to your computer, you use a USB cable. Windows come preloaded with hundreds of drivers for various printers and it will automatically loaded, uh, load drivers when it detects that a printer is connected. As what we have here, no, the following figures show how Windows detecting a USB device and installing the device driver. When connecting a printer, you should always read the manufacturer documentation before making any connections. Open printer ship with a quick start flyer and software installation DVD. In many cases, you will be directed to run the installation program on the DVD before you connect the printer on the system. Installing, of course, the manufacturer's driver first ensure that Windows does not install and use a generic device driver for the printer instead of using the feature-rich driver supplied by the manufacturer. Once a printer is connected, you should always print a test page to be sure it is functioning properly. Installed printers are listed in the printers in scanners window of the setting app in the printer section of the device and printers page in the control panel and in the print menu or installed application programs for example the following figures as what we have here shows available printers in the print dialog box in the application as what we have here simply select the printer in the print dialog box in order to connect to it Note that in many cases, you will find entries such as Microsoft Print to PDF, Microsoft XPS Document Writer, or Send to OneNote in the printer list. Even though these are not hardware print devices, you can send print output to them. In addition to sending output to a printer directly attached to your computer, you can send output to a shared printer attached to another computer, or you can send output to a printer that is attached directly to a network. You will explore these types of connection in an upcoming discussion. <coughs> Digital cameras. The 
digital cameras encode images and video into digital files that are stored, stored and can later be edited and played back. Files are stored on a SD card. Because many digital cameras are connected directly to a computer for the purpose of transferring captured images and videos. And USB is the most commonly used connection for this type of the file transfer. When you connect a camera to PC via USB, the camera's internal storage system is treated as an accessible storage location. The PC will assign it a driver, a drive letter, and you can navigate it as you would only storage uh, device. Sometimes drive E, drive F, and so on. Newer cameras also commonly include wireless capabilities and can use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or infrared connection to transfer pictures and video to a PC or to smartphones. A smartphone can use cellular networks to transfer and share photos, and many mobile operating systems provide for automatic uploading to cloud storage. Another alternative for uh, transferring image and video files from a camera to a computer is to remove the SD card from the camera and insert, into, into, uh, insert it into a card reader slot on the computer. In this manner, you are using the SD card like a flash drive. <coughs> Wireless connection technologies. <coughs> Wireless connection use radio waves and free space instead of physical wire or cables. The short-range wireless connection discuss about Bluetooth and infrared are used to connect devices such as computer and phones or to accessories such as headset, mice, keyboards, and so on. These technologies are too, are not related to Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi connections will be discussed later or in our topic next time. The Bluetooth is a wireless technology used to allow devices such as computers and phones to work with Bluetooth enable accessories such as headset, mice, cables, and so on. Bluetooth devices and accessories must be paired with each other before they can communicate. And you can pair devices by the following steps. Number one, turn Bluetooth on on your device. Bluetooth requires quite a bit of energy and accordingly, most people keep Bluetooth turned off on their battery-powered devices until they need it. Number two, put your accessory into discovery mode. This allow or allows your accessory to broadcast its availability and other Bluetooth devices within range can discover it. The specific steps required to change to discovery mode depend on the accessory. On many accessories, you, you hold down a button for several seconds until a light starts flashing. A device will remain discover, discover, discoverable for only a few minutes in order to save power. On the device, that you want to connect the accessory to, review the Bluetooth settings screen to see a list of nearby devices that are in discovery mode. And this screen also shows accessories that are already paired to the devices. Number four, pair the devices by selecting the accessory in the list. You may be prompted to enter a PIN code to pair the devices. The required code will be displayed on the device screens. For example, if you are uh, pairing your phone with your computer, you will see a pin on the phone screen and you will type it into your computer. After Bluetooth devices are paired, they should automatically see each other and communicate when they are both powered on and have Bluetooth enabled. <coughs> Take note that Bluetooth is also commonly used to enable hands-free phone calling by using a card stereo system to make or receive calls without touching the phones and to transfer files between devices that are in close proximately to each other. <coughs> Compatibility consideration. It is important to understand that devices and accessories must be compatible. In other words, just because a device and as accessories are Bluetooth enabled, it does not necessarily mean that they will work together. For example, iPads and iPhones support an array of Bluetooth accessories such as headset, remote controls, and keyboards. However, they do not support Bluetooth mice. An infrared is uh, infrared. Infrared wireless or IR uh, wireless technology uses a beam of invisible light to transmit information. 
The sending and receiving devices must both contain infrared ports and must be within fairly close proximity. For example, in the same room, in order for a connection to succeed. Infrared technology is used in TV remotes, cordless microphones, wireless mice, cameras, and audio devices. Infrared transmitters on smartphones allow you to use your smartphone as a TV or set top box remote control. And this will be my references. CCI Learning Solutions, page 37 to 67. Abanti M Basic Office Application, Anvil Publishing Incorporated. Abanti M ICT Empowerment MS Office Application, Unlimited Books Incorporation. So thank you for watching. I hope uh, now it is clear to everyone the different hardware devices in its application. Good luck everyone in Godspeed.